I've really been thinking about the book of Proverbs a lot lately. And it's just one of the most amazing books in the entire Bible. And you could literally go to every book of the Bible and, and just say, wow, this is ama an amazing book. But I just want to talk to you about Proverbs a little bit. I don't know how far I'll go with it. But you look at, just going to look at Proverbs, an overview of Proverbs, and you're going to see Christ is typified as our wisdom. You know, Proverbs is a wisdom book wrote by Solomon, most likely the wisest man that God ever allowed to be wise or have wisdom. And so what you have in Proverbs is the Lord Jesus Christ typified as our wisdom. And in 1 Corinthians 1.30, it says, But of him are ye, are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So, who of God is made unto us wisdom? Proverbs, some might consider it the best wisdom book. Well, it's going to show you Jesus Christ, our wisdom. Written by Solomon, a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Proverbs, you want to find Jesus in it? Well, he's on every page. He's your wisdom in the book of Proverbs. And it, it's got 31 chapters. That's the amazing thing about it. 31 chapters will line up with every day of the month. You know, you got 31 days in a month. In most months. So you could read a chapter of Proverbs a day. And, and many people do that. So 31 chapters. Read a proverb a day. It'll run the devil away. Well, it probably won't run him away. But it'll help you fight him off. 31 chapters. 915 verses. And 15,043 words. So... It's not as long as you think it is. It wouldn't take you that long to read it if you just sit down and read it. You could probably read it in a couple of hours. And the theme is wisdom is the principal thing. Look at Proverbs 4 and verse 7. Proverbs 4, 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. But people are really getting into wisdom. Like, you, you think about people they watch on the internet, like Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, people like that. Those people do have a lot of good things to say, some wisdom, but they don't have God, so it's man's wisdom. You read the book of Proverbs... You stay in the book of Proverbs, you're going to have more wisdom than all these um, really big-time smart guys put together. Because true wisdom is found in the Scriptures. And since they don't believe the Scriptures, it really holds them back from having real wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. You want to get wisdom, you read the book of Proverbs. So that's the theme. Wisdom is the principal thing. You think about the applications, the three applications for the book of Proverbs. Historically, Solomon is writing to his son, Rehoboam. And you remember Rehoboam? Not a good king. King Rehoboam, he, uh, he's the one responsible pretty much for the dividing of the kingdom. He took the old, or he took the young men and took their advice over the old men's advice. And they actually gave him the wrong advice. It ends up with him splitting the kingdom but that's who Solomon's writing to and I don't think that Rehoboam really hearkened to Solomon much you look at Proverbs 1 verse 8 Solomon says my son hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother and I don't think he really paid too much attention to it but historically what Proverbs is, is Solomon writing to Rehoboam. Devotionally, you've got wisdom for all. Wisdom for anything that you might face in your life can be found in this book. And doctrinally, you got warnings from God to Israel about the Antichrist. 
and that's what's going to add some really deep layers to the book. You got warnings from God to Israel about the Antichrist, like in Proverbs 23, and about the great whore in many places, like 216, 53, 520, 624, 75, 2016, 23, 27, 27, 13. And the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, it's Solomon writing to his son Rehoboam. You could also look at it like it's our father writing to us, giving us instruction. But the author, obviously, Solomon, for Proverbs 1 through 29. Then Agur, A-G-U-R, is Proverbs 30. And then Lemuel is Proverbs 31. So that's a quick little outline for you for Proverbs. And you can already see it's an amazing book. But look at verse 1 now. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. The Proverbs of Solomon. Look at 1 Kings 4, 29. 1 Kings 4, 29. It says, And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding, exceeding much, and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. So you look at the sand that's on the seashore. That's how much God put into Solomon. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country. And all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men. Then Ethan the Ezrahite and Heman and Chalcol and Darda the sons of Mahol. And his fame was in all nations round about. Now look at this, this verse here. 1 Kings 4.32 And he spake 3,000 proverbs and his songs were 1,005. So he spake 3,000 proverbs and his songs were 1,005. So you just think about that. <clears throat> Solomon did go south uh, towards the end of his life. But in his life he spake 3,000 proverbs and 1,005 songs. That's a lot of Proverbs and songs. And that he strikes me as somebody that really uses time wisely. And that's what I want to do. I want to use my time wisely. Have something to pass down to my son. You know, Proverbs, he passed that down to his sons. You want to have something to pass down to your son. After you die, can they go in your room and see journals and Bibles and things like that that you've wrote in to pass down to them. That way you kind of live on. Your voice kind of lives on. But the Proverbs of Solomon. Well, this is just some of them. He wrote 3,000 Proverbs. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. So he is the son of David. And not just the son of David, but the son of Bathsheba. In 2 Samuel uh, 12, 24, 2 Samuel 12, and verse 24, it says, And David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went in unto her and lay with her, and she bare a son, and he called his name Solomon. And the Lord loved him. So, David actually came about, or Solomon actually came about from David and Bathsheba. You remember Bathsheba is the one that David kind of stole away there from Uriah. So that shows you the Lord can end up bringing something good even out of a situation that should have not been. So the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. So that's telling you the author. He says, to know wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding so wisdom wisdom is knowing how to use the facts that God's given you you know you if you've read the Bible a lot 
You know the facts. But do you know how to use the facts that God's given you? Uh, wisdom, the right use or exercise of knowledge. What are you doing with the wisdom or with the facts that God's given you? What are you doing with those facts? Are you putting them in practice? Until you use the facts, you're not showing wisdom. You may have a lot of facts, but if you're not using them, you're not being a wise man. So to know wisdom and instruction. You think about instructions. A lot of people, maybe when they put something together or just do anything, they don't like to read the instructions. But you don't want to forget to read the instructions. God didn't put you in this life just by yourself, you see. He didn't just drop you down here and say, okay, do the best you can. He gave you 66 books of instructions. And 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So you've got the instruction book. And <clears throat> since you're never done with life, you know, a lot of things, you know, you put something together, you're done with those instructions. Most likely, you'll probably never look at them again. And you tuck them away somewhere, you forget about them. And for some reason, people are like that with the Bible. They look at their life. They think, man, I got this all figured out. They take the Bible, they put it on the shelf, and they never take it back out again if they ever took it out to begin with because a lot of people think they've got life figured out before they even looked at the instructions and they try to put things in their life together and it just they got stuff put in the wrong place and by the time that they get done they got parts left over and it just turns out to be a mess and it's crooked and it's ugly and their wife's mad about it and She's wanting them to take it apart and put it back together. And they still won't look at the instructions. So you've got an instruction book. Don't forget to read it. Don't put it on the shelf. You're never done with this life until you're dead. So you might as well just carry the instruction manual around with you. So to know wisdom and instruction. God's given you instructions. He's wanting you to go by them. To perceive the words of understanding. Now, the devil, he had a lot of wisdom, but he didn't have understanding. Let me show you what, what understanding is. Job 28, 28. And unto man he said, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. You know, the Bible says the devil was wiser than Daniel. But he didn't uh, depart from evil. He didn't have understanding. Maybe you got a whole lot of wisdom. You know the facts. You know if something is right and wrong. But you don't do what's right. So you don't depart from evil. It shows you don't have understanding. Satan, wiser than Daniel, Ezekiel 28, 3. But he lacks understanding. And I don't fully know that I under, under, even understand myself how he could have so much wisdom, have been so close to God as the anointed cherub, and still rebel. My mind can't fathom that. I'm just a regular man. I lack a lot of wisdom. I lack a lot of knowledge and understanding. But I believe that's what it is. He's got a lot of wisdom, but not a lot of understanding. So to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, or no, verse 2, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. You want wisdom, you want instructions, you want understanding, you read the book of Proverbs. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. So receive the instruction of wisdom. You receive it. You don't simply just 
read it. No, you could read the Bible all day and not receive it. You want to receive it. You want to take it to heart. So you receive the words. Everything that you come across, you say, that's right. That's true. I agree. 100%. God's right. Let God be true, but every man a liar. If this guy's trying to change it, he's a liar. If this guy's over here and he's saying he's got a, a better translation would be, he's a liar. You know, the Bible effectually works in you that believe, as Paul told them in Thessalonians. You want to receive the instruction of wisdom. You receive it. And it's like a gift you're receiving. The words of God are a gift. You know, God didn't just stop with your salvation. He gave you the word of God as a gift. To receive the instruction of wisdom. Justice. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice. Justice is giving what is due. And when you read the Bible, it's calling it like it is. It's giving a person what's due to him. It's showing you what you really are. You see, the Bible calls man a sinner, and it's just in doing so. When you read Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, when you read Romans 3.10, there's none righteous, no, not one. When you read Solomon say, there's not a just man on the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. It's just in doing so. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment. 1 Corinthians 2.15 1 Corinthians 2.15, it says, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Judging things are good. You know, the Bible warns against hypocritical judgment, but God wants you to be living right and being able to judge. He wants you to judge yourselves. If you judge yourself, you won't be judged. So judgment. Reading the Bible will show you how to judge righteously. It'll show you how to approve things that are excellent and disapprove of things that aren't excellent. So, receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, equity. Equity is impartial distribution of justice. That means without respect of persons. You can look at a thing and it doesn't matter if you like this certain thing or you don't like it. You're going to call it as the Bible sees it. You know, there's a lot of things you may like, and since you like that certain thing, that certain sin, you got a soft spot for it. And some people might give that a little bit of, um, give that a pass because their flesh likes it. But if you got equi equity, then you call it a sin is sin, just as much as this other sin that you don't have a temptation for. Or you, you're making a judgment call between two people. You like one, you don't like the other. The one you don't like is correct, and the one you do like is not correct. You got equity. You, you're going to have an impartial distribution of justice. You're not going to do it with respective persons. You're not going to have favoritism. You're going to just be honest, sincere, genuine with it. And the book of Proverbs will help you to receive the instruction of wisdom justice and judgment and equity but i'll go ahead and stop there like i said i don't know how long i'll go with the book of proverbs i've just been really thinking about it i think i started on it a few years back and i got led away from it <clears throat> before but maybe these proverb studies will help you